Hey Internet, it's time for another gamer rant. This time about a topic I have seen getting bounced around quite a bit in the dissident right side of YouTube recently, and that is the topic of ESG scores, or environmental social governance scores. And as someone who can be described as a hop-style Austro-libertarian, I'm in an interesting situation where I basically exist at the crossroads between dissident right and libertarian thought, which puts me in a unique situation where I can give some additional insight on this subject. The issue I have noticed is that there is a lot a lot of people complaining about the problems of ESG and the issues of corporations using them as a way to control each other, but I've not really seen enough going into identifying just who exactly, very specifically, is in charge of ESG. Instead, I see a lot of people just kind of saying, oh, this is woke capitalism, and not really going into where it's actually coming from, and why it seems to have so much power. But before I get into that, I'll just give a brief explanation for what ESG is on its surface for anyone who's not quite yet up to speed on it. So here's the quick rundown. ESG is basically a set of various standards and criteria that are being used to score businesses based on how good of a job that a business does in doing things that are allegedly good for society in the long run, such as caring about the environment, having socially fair business practices, whatever that happens to mean, and are actively engaged in long-term payoffs over short-term gains. Or at least, this is what proponents of ESG claim it is on the surface. This is of course not actually true, I am definitely of the opinion that this is all a massive scam and I'll be going into that as well. It has way too much leftist claptrap baked into it and useless pet projects that have been baked into how ESG is scored, and yes, it is an actual score. You can actually go online and look up ESG scores in various agencies and how they've attached this ESG score to various businesses. So that's one thing that needs to be cleared up, of course, is that ESG is not just some random buzzword. It is an actual score that is actually used for some investments. We're not talking about some random weird conspiracy theory here or anything. One of the things that makes ESG such an effective scam is that, on its surface, ESG, from an economic standpoint, isn't automatically a bad idea. But unfortunately, this is, of course, exactly what makes it such an effective scam. The idea of investing in business based on their time preference makes perfect sense. A free society that wishes to sustain itself would need to care about long-term strategies that care about maintaining the environment and culture which allow that society to exist. The problem, of course, is that ESG does not actually accomplish this task, but rather it is merely pretending to do so. ESG, in practice, is not trying to create or maintain a free society, rather its true intentions are exactly the opposite. It's to seize and gain power for the state and a few select big corporations. This is why ESG as it currently exists includes a bunch of commie garbage into its scoring system that has absolutely nothing to do with maintaining the environment or lowering time preferences for the sake of long-term investments or promoting pro-freedom cultural values. It's not actually doing any of that. The most obvious problem being that ESG tries to enforce diversity, equity, inclusion standards despite the fact that those three things are all neutral concepts at absolute best. Despite what, what leftists tell you, there is no real measurable benefit to DEI and the studies which claim to show it all have demonstrable errors in one way or another. Or in simpler terms, the biggest factor that goes into ESG is scoring how woke your corporation is. The simplest way to see this is just by looking up McDonald's score and then looking up Tesla's score. Why on earth would Tesla, a company that is geared towards creating electric cars, which would supposedly have a long-term environmental benefit, why do they have a lower score than a fast food restaurant? That makes absolutely no sense. I mean, let's just think about that for a second. Why on earth would big chain fast food restaurants have fairly good ESG scores. They have some of the worst time preferences. Their food is made to be cheap and easy. It's not very well prepared at all. It comes from non-sustainable farms. It's useless. Terrible food coming from bad, terrible sources. People only buy it because it's high time preference. They want quick and easy. So little tidbits like that show why ESG is obviously a scam. And this all starts to really beg the question. If ESG isn't actually useful of a score as an investment measure, then why on earth does any business care about it? Why would investors be looking at a score that doesn't actually grant them profits? Again, the scam on its surface is that they want you to think that they actually care about the environment and care about people and care about equality and all that. But of course they don't. So if it's not about profits, and it's not about what they claim it it's about, why does any investor care about it? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now, does it? Well, in order to answer that question, I can now finally get into the main topic of the video, the origins of ESG. 
Now, the prototype that would set the stage for what would eventually become ESG originally came from the United Nations and the United States at the end of the previous century when they started coming up with additional environmental and civil rights regulations for businesses to abide by. This would eventually morph into things like the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the various regulations and subsidies that would be passed in order to help reach those goals. Some of their goals make sense, while others are basically just woke toy ma equity nonsense. And we can see this in various laws today. Many environmental regulations that world governments have passed can be seen baked into the environmental component of how ESG is calculated. And DEI is legally encoded through civil entitlements and the disparate impact standard. Yeah, in case anybody needs to be reminded, DEI is actually law. It's not just some random thing that we just happen to have. People can absolutely be taken to court on accusations of discrimination or creating a hostile workplace environment purely for business practices which produce an inequitable outcome, even if no discriminatory intent can be proven. So yes, you actually can be taken to court over DEI. Wokeness is not some mysterious phantom that arose out of the markets for just some mysterious cause. Rather, wokeness gets its power over our culture through actual legal practice. On a side note here, this is why leftists partaking in cancel culture against people and organizations for not being woke enough is actually not quite quite the same thing as when rightoids try to boycott a product for being too woke. Cancel culture has actual state aggression backing it up through the legal system. It is not the same as private individuals partaking in a boycott. This is why boycotts are actually based, by the way. If a business is partaking in a practice that you do not approve of, you absolutely have the right to boycott them, and you don't owe anybody an explanation for why. Anyway, tangent over, back to the topic of ESG origins. So the prototype that would become ESG basically all came from the state. However, what we're seeing is actually something a little bit more complicated. To put it simply, ESG is the same corporatist scam that we've been seeing since the institution of the Fed. We have these major asset management firms that rely on the Fed and the central banking system's existence, such as Vanguard, Straight Street, and especially BlackRock, partaking in the same revolving door and government lobbying scam that has basically been going on for ages. However, this time it's actually even more nefarious than just the usual ploy of big business and government working together to pass aggressive and unfair regulations. There is an extra component to their game here. You see, these asset management and investment corporations like BlackRock are so big that they have investments in just about every single major business in the Western world. And because of BlackRock's incestuous, I guess you could say, relationship with the Federal Reserve, they're pretty much guaranteed to remain big. This has led some people to accuse BlackRock of being a fourth branch of the US government. There is an absolutely ridiculous amount of contracts BlackRock takes up with the state in order to work for them. And the amount of revolving door activity where the same person will then go to work for the government, then work for BlackRock, and then work for the government again, is ridiculously higher than what you would normally expect from bigger corporations. This relationship puts them in a unique position where they can lobby the government for regulations that are favorable to ESG, while at the same time selling the concept of ESG as an investment. So when BlackRock tells a business that they need to take insert ESG component here seriously, there's a very good chance that they are right because chances are very good that BlackRock is lobbying for that very thing to be a law as we speak. The state will then of course happily oblige and pass those regulations because they were the ones who came up with the idea and prototype ideas for ESG in the first place, and of course they have already an established relationship with these firms. This puts businesses in a situation where even if they don't really care about BlackRock's ESG investment funds, they know that they will likely have to comply anyways because it's only a matter of time before an ESG measure that isn't already encoded into US law as an actual legal business regulation will eventually end up as law anyways. So they might as well just bow down to the cult and get those funds for themselves. But all this means is that ESG is in fact not a voluntary product of the free market at all. Rather, it is a practice of the state and these massive investment management firms working together to force smaller businesses to do what they want. This means that ESG does not come from a desire for profit or a desire from what ESG claims to be, but rather it all comes from a goal of power. The primary reason that big business will lobby the state for more regulations rather than less regulations is not because they genuinely believe in the effectiveness of those regulations to actually make the world a better place or anything. They don't care about that. 
but rather it is because larger businesses can more easily eat the cost of those regulations. The more arbitrary barriers to entry that there are that are created in the market by the government, the less potential competition those currently in power have to worry about. In this sense, ESG can also be seen as yet another classic case of corrupt officials pretending to be the good guys. ESG serves as a fantastic front to push these barriers to entry because it works in line with what is considered acceptable discourse by the cathedral. On the surface, ESG proponents can be claiming that they are fighting for justice, saving the environment, ma equality, ma fair governance, ma equity, ma inclusion, and all that stuff which makes your average woke toy feel all fuzzy and warm inside. This controlled opposition is then sold to the public where all these useful idiots can then proceed to clap. So in addition to ESG coming from the usual lobbying and revolving door regulatory tomfoolery, ESG adds an additional component to their scam via propaganda. For instance, you may have heard of the meme where the man who thinks he's fighting against the establishment strangely seems to agree with everything the establishment says. Guess what? That's also an intentional component of ESG. A huge portion of the far left will protest in favor of these ESG regulations without knowing it, or knowing that the big businesses which they claim to hate so much will ultimately be the ones who benefit benefit the most at the expense of smaller businesses. As someone who trudges through bread tube claptrap all the time, I have seen on more than one occasion someone complaining about BlackRock being too big, but then in the very next breath they'll be supporting the very same government regulations and systems which allow BlackRock to be so massive in the first place. To put it all very simply, ESG stems from the very problems caused by when the state is allowed to play favorites. They will ultimately always favor those that help keep them in power, rather than those who seek meaningful change and reduction of their power or freedom from their broken two-party system. What's really interesting is that everything I have just said only really scratches the surface of this rabbit hole. If you want to find out much more in-depth explanations on ESG and its ties to cronyism, I strongly recommend the works of Alan Mendenhall. I hope, hope I pronounced his name right there, Alan Mendenhall. He has been researching this particular subject for a very long time and has done some several lengthy, pretty good quality seminars on it. I'll be linking his latest for anybody who is interested. But as for my own content, my next long form high effort video where I actually put some pretty good effort into the editing and actually make it longer than probably 20 minutes or so will be on slavery and debunking many bad bread tube takes on it. I may or may not release something shorter before it is finished, but for now, that is where my effort shall be going to. As for this video, that's all. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, tip me on Ko-Fi, and subscribe and all that. Till next time.